It's empty. Gotcha. What's going on guys? Cameron here with Canadian Gamer. Coming back at you with another Coffee and Conversation episode. And today we're going to talk about Breath of the Wild. Uh, I know this topic's been beaten to death, or at least this game has, but uh, I'm going to try to put a little bit of a spin on it. Uh, so recently, or last night I should say, I busted out the Nintendo Wii U, which I don't play very often. It was literally collecting dust. Tried to shoot this video outside, by the way, but there's just too much sun glare, so we're going to try to do it inside. So again, I do apologize for the bland backdrop. Anyhow, like I said, I busted out the Wii U last night because I wanted to give this another go. Now, Breath of the Wild came out about three years ago, if I'm not mistaken, maybe a little bit longer now. I had purchased this brand new off of a reseller for about $50 Canadian. And what happened was I was on a business trip to Toronto and I was held up in a hotel room for a couple of weeks. And uh, this is the game that I brought with me. Now, I only got a couple of hours into it. Uh, I just couldn't get into the whole, the lore of it, the open world, uh, your weapons constantly breaking. I don't know, I just couldn't get into it. So it's kind of embarrassing, right? You pay, well, I didn't pay full retail, but 50 bucks for a game like this. And I didn't even scratch the surface. I didn't honestly give it a fair shake. So that's why I wanted to revisit it uh, now, especially with the lockdown we have going on, to see if, you know, did I make a false assessment on this game? Did I, you know, did I jump the gun in terms of, you know, shooting this game down and, uh, you know, suggesting that it wasn't as great as, you know, the general public makes it out to be. Well, I put it on last night and, you know, first things first, uh, I know a lot of you guys, myself included, see some redeeming qualities in the Wii U. It's got some charm to it. But let me tell you, you know, over the last couple of years, I have updated my internet in my house and uh, the Wi-Fi the password needed to be updated on the, the Wii U. I don't have that shit lying around. So I had to go running around looking for that. The reason why I needed that is because when I put this game on, it was asking to update it. So I finally get my, uh, my Wi-Fi password all set up, connect to the internet. Now, this game takes up the entire hard drive on my base model Wii U. I don't have an extra external hard drive lying around, so I couldn't, I couldn't even update the game. And the loading, you know, the loading screens on the Wii U not even just this game, but just the uh, the UI, the, hub, the central hub. It's so slow and laggy, it's ridiculous. So as I get past all that, I start up Breath of the Wild. Now, granted again, I didn't get too far into it last night, but I think what I'm gonna do with this game, I'm gonna take my time, I'm gonna sort of slowly explore the open world at my leisure, and I'm not gonna try to stay focused on, you know, going from one section to another, exactly where you're supposed to go, etc. Because that's what sort of frustrated me. I find this game, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm just getting to be a little bit too old for gaming. I find the difficulty curve in this is uh, is a bit much. I find, you know, at least with a game like, and I know it's not apples to apples comparison, but uh, A Link to the Past on the SNES had some challenging moments, but it was never overbearing. I find this game right off the hop, just instantly die just like that if you don't know where you're going or what you're doing and the controls take a lot of getting used to well, one of the things that kind of bugs me the most about this a couple of things the first thing is do we really know what time period the legend of zelda series takes place in they never really say i don't believe they do but if i had to guess it would be before the 19th century in this game and i understand they're trying to westernize it the title breath of the wild very you know very american like um, you know, he's got a, a GPS navigation tool in his side pocket. That blue slate thing that he puts up to all those um, temples that makes them rise from the ground. Why does, why does Link have a GPS navigation tool? That shouldn't be allowed in a game like The Legend of Zelda. You should have your sword, your shield, your grappling hook, your basic weapons. He shouldn't have a GPS nav in his back pocket. I'm sorry. It, to me, that's just ridiculous. Like I said, these blue, I don't know what they're called. I can't remember it. These blue 
mechanisms that you walk up to and they trigger certain things. To me, that's like almost too futuristic for a game like this. So that kind of bugs me. And yes, of course, the weapons breaking is quite frustrating as well. Um, but the presentation is extremely slick. There's no denying it's a 10 out of 10 from the moment you walk out into the open world. And you've got the inner, kind of like an overlay that says Breath of the Wild in the bottom right corner. And Link standing over the mountain looking at this open world. It's pretty impressive. The graphics, obviously, excuse me, the graphics, you know, it's not Xbox One PS4 graphics. But the, the art direction, it's visually stunning to see this game in motion. It's it, You know it's a... Triple A title for sure, and I can understand why maybe they are still charging full retail for this game. It'd be nice to see Nintendo start putting out the greatest hits collections again and maybe discount these types of games. I know they don't make Wii U games anymore, but for those uh, for you diehard Switch collectors out there, so that's basically it. I'm gonna try to chip away at this over the next couple of days to see if I can get a better assessment as to whether or not I do enjoy this game. I tried to play the Wind Waker a couple of weeks ago and although I can appreciate the art direction in that game, I just couldn't get into it. I could not get into that game. So hopefully, like I said, hopefully I can at least get my money's worth and put some more time into this game. And also as well, um, you know, the dungeons that they have, they're not really dungeons. They're like, again, they're like water temples and there's different types of puzzles you have to figure out with, uh, you know, moving uh, marbles or balls, I don't know what they call them, and you move things around, you have kinetic abilities. I, I don't know about that. I wish there was just regular dungeons in the game. So just a short video, I just wanted to talk about how I've returned to Breath of the Wild three years later. Yes, I've returned to the scene of the crime to give this game another go. So that's gonna do it, just a short video. Do you guys enjoy this game? Is it overhyped? Are you impartial to it? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, guys, enjoy your coffee.